introduce Walt so you can all um, soak up what he's here to share. Um, I'm super excited and we're very honored to have Walt Brown here with us. Um, Walt is a three-time entrepreneur. He is an author and just a general spitfire, which if you don't know him, you're about to find out. Um, he has the distinction of being implementer number three within the EOS business. Um, he has been here since the beginning doing this work and getting to know hundreds and hundreds of amazing businesses. Um, he's also learned or earned the title of Uncle Walt from his clients. Um, he is really a big supporter of these businesses and they they really feel like he's part of the family once he's he becomes their implementer. Um, he's authored a new book that was selected by Ben Bella Books to join the canon of EOS literature right alongside Gina Wickman and Patrick Lencioni's contributions. And in Lyft Integrator community is honored to have the first like hot off the presses glimpse at the content of this book, which is called Attract or Repel. The book is focused on how to use an operating system like EOS or other systems to empower your people to drive measurable, robust organizational health. And the, the key keyword that is part of this book is to, to drive high levels of bite which stands for buy-in, inclusion, trust, and engagement. So we're, again, so grateful to have Walt here. Thank you for your time, Walt. And I'm going to turn, I'm going to stop sharing my slides and turn the mic over to you. Um, you can take it from here. Okay. Pin screen. Right. So take a, take a real quiet moment. I want each one of you just to take a real quiet moment to reflect back. And I want, to, want you to, to put yourself or think about yourself in that job you had before your current role, before where you currently are, or even two jobs back that you considered like a full-time job or a, or a career path job, not like Pizza Hut or something like that in college, but where you really were sort of stepping in and being part of a company and part of a trial. So I want you to set that up. So let's sort of give me a nod when, a nod when you have that company in mind. All right, and now what I want, what I'm going to do is we're going to think about this place, and I'm going to ask you or present sort of seven thoughts, and I want you to think about your alignment, like your positive alignment to these thoughts, and, and on a scale of like zero to ten. So jumping in here, zero to ten, where out here in the in the world of like a nine or a 10 or an eight and a half it's like and you felt pretty positive about what i'm going to ask you a seven or an eight and a half is kind of neutral maybe a little bit better than ambivalent and then six and below is like no cool on that guys so here we go these are the these are the seven critical needs that we've discovered over time that when our employees in this case, you're thinking about yourself as an employee, you can get to positive alignment to them, then you're going to have high levels of buy-in, inclusion, trust, and engagement. So the first question we ask is, reflecting in that business, did you, knew, did you know what it meant to belong? In other words, had the organization established a set of like core values and behaviors of the way you treated each other? And was it super clear on what skills you were expected to bring to the organization? So as a part of this tribe, you knew you belong. Belong. Real quick. One to ten. Second question I'm going to ask you is, is about the need to believe. Lift back up. Look back into that, that time back then. Did you believe in, in the mission? Did you believe in the purpose? Did you believe in the products and services? Did you believe in leadership and their strategy? Did you believe where the priorities were going? Did you believe in where the resources of the organization were going? Could you even see that? Scale of one to 10, were you allowed to actually believe? Third critical need is the need to be accountable. So when you really think about this in a context, you're focusing more on the people who do belong and do believe, and then are we creating a super clear path where they know what they're accountable and responsible for? Do they know what they're doing and how it aligns to what they're being asked to believe? 
We clear on what you're accountable for. Fourth item, critical need to feel like you're a solid part of a tribe to be measured. You take these accountabilities and were there, were there clear numbers? Were there clear measures that you agreed upon, you agreed with, that let you know you're doing a good job? Or were there numbers in there, objectives, where you could actually create a strategy on your own because you knew what you were accountable for to actually reach the measurable? Did it give you some autonomy? Did the measures actually give you autonomy? Feel like you were measured. Fifth critical need to be heard. What's interesting here to flip a little bit, but what we're asking here, did you understand and embrace how the organization listens? Was it clear to you how your company actually opened the channels to, to listen? And did you know how to like tune into that right channel? Not just like yelling in the hallway to be heard, but did you understand and embrace how the organization listens? Did you participate in those channels and did you feel like you were being heard? One to 10. Six. That's number six, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. The need to be developed. Very similar to the herd piece. Did you understand how the organization offered you opportunities to participate in your own development? Did you understand and embrace how that program worked, how those methodologies worked? Were they clear to you? Did you know when to step in if you wanted to be developed? Not everybody wants to be developed, but was it clear on how you could be involved in your own development? You got one to 10. And then finally, to be balanced. So balance is basically a three-part piece. You know, and with your organization super clear on this is what the work-life balance, balance looks like. Were you clear on how many hours a week you were expected to work? Were you clear on where you were working from? And was this something that tied into your definition of like work-life balance or work-life integration? Was it able to pay? Were you clear on what the job paid you? Were you able to live within your ways and means of what the job paid? You can't live within the ways and means. It's hard for it to be balanced. It creates a lot of stress. And then finally, you know, you have a... a a, a sort of a self level of, of like expectations around wellness. And did you understand whether the company helped you with that wellness or not, or to give you opportunities to be in charge of your own wellness? So it's kind of a three part question on a scale of one to 10. Anybody have any sixes or below? Raise your hand. I can see like 20 of you on the screen. Anyone here? Other people, you're perfect. I see they're raising the hands. So you were a flight, flight risk and you're no longer there. <laughs> so, right. So here, a real quick point, the integrator owns how we get people to be positively aligned to these seven things through the tools of your operating system. You have tool, even if your system is ad hoc, you have tools and you can actually basically measure how your people are aligning to these seven things, take that measurement back and then come back with a plan through your tools, your operating system to help people get positively aligned to these seven things. A lot of the work, I feel like I'm preaching now, but it's, I'll, I'll land a plane in a second. The work of you guys with your operating system, with your leadership team at first is to define what it means to belong. These are our values. These are the skills you need to bring. You, to define, this is what we're asking you to believe in. So imagine you're interviewing somebody and you're saying, this is what it means to belong here. And this is what we're asking you to believe in. And this is what you're accountable for. And this is how you're measured. And this is how you're going to be heard and developed. And this is how you maintain balance. And you're saying to them, this is, these are our definitions. Join us if you want to be part of it. And you, you can buy into these things. Otherwise, please don't come. So it's attract or repel. So you start off and then your operating system tools should help you maintain alignment. That's all I got for you. That's the tip of the iceberg.
but it's also what makes the iceberg float. Showing you the tip, that's also what makes it float. Amazing. You were you killed it on time walk, but do you want to talk a little bit about how they can learn more? I know the book won't be out for a while. We're getting like a real advanced um yeah. preview on this, but now and a lot of this stuff's already been done. It's been it's just been reformatted into the bike in the book. Uh bike7.com, bike b i t e seven dot com, buy and include and trust and engagement. And if you go in there and it looks good for you, we're actually offering the first three callers. Actually, anybody who would like to go through it, we do a concierge service. We'll take you out there and let you run through it and experience how it works. Any quick questions? Is that uh, that went pretty fast there? Your contact guy's gonna be a guy named Chris, fresh haircut. He's here today. So yeah, to take advantage of if you want to learn more, you want to go through that exercise, that concierge service with them, it would be to email Chris at bite7.com. It's an eight thousand dollar value. <laughs> like last week, I presented the. Uh, the uh, Visionary Summit. I don't know if any of you guys had your visionaries go up there or not. We had 43 people and 22 of them raised their hand to go through it. It's a two and a half hour deal. We're happy to answer more questions. Any questions in here or any little nugget thoughts? What do we have, like seven minutes? Anybody got a question? Throw it in chat and maybe you can look at it, Jess. Yeah. Where this stuff came from, how many clients have used it. I will ask you that question, Wall. How many how many people have you used this with? We've taken around 200, 200 organizations through. That's great. And they measure twice a year, and they create an action plan twice a year. Always Are have information before they go into their annuals. Got it. Is there any trends you see on which of those seven organizations have the most trouble with? Or which which in here? You're yeah. going to go out. I mean, it's always down here in the measured, heard, developed. Measured and heard a lot of times. People are saying they're good on accountability. But this is this is the this is the real takeaway. You can measure the impact of your operating system implementation. You can measure how far out it's getting and whether the tools are being used well enough based on what your byte index coming coming back is. Most indexes come back between a 42 and a 62. Think of like net promoter score, and we can drive people up where you're getting like an 80 or better. And so, so it's 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 how you flip the script. So a lot of the clients who are struggling with rolling out their operating system, we we have them do a survey before their quarterly. We get the results back and then they look at all the results and then in their state of the company or the meeting they have after their quarterly, they say to their folks, you guys remember that survey we gave you that you guys filled out? That's a promise that we're making. We want to create one single organization where everybody that you're surrounded with is able to be positively aligned to these seven things. These are the scores we saw that came back. These are the lowest three scores. And we're going to really focus on strengthening the way we use these tools inside the organization. We want to be using these tools for you, not to you. So because we want you to be heard. We want you to understand how we listen. We want to make sure that you're giving us a voice and what you think the best way to be measured is. So use the survey and the results, simple, simple seven questions, and the tools of your of your operating system to press them out. And once you flip that script and they actually see the why that you're doing these tools to them, they stop seeing it as it being done to them and for them. It's a promise you're making to the organization. Um, it, Donald, do you, do you have a question? Yes, I do. Um, I, I think this is awesome. Question I have is. You mentioned people score 42 to 60 or so. Are you saying that you take the, the cumulative score? So if you've got, you know, twos and threes and sevens, it adds up to 42 and you rank that for the health of the organization in terms of their bites? Yeah, so I can hit that real quick. All right. So you see, can y'all see this drawing right here? It's kind of light, but it's an H called H graph. And across here is, is what we call the energy line. Like this little dotted line is everybody above this dotted line is positively engaged. They're putting energy into the organization. Everybody below is pulling out. And so basically, what we're, what, typically when we do a survey, around 60% are positively aligned to these seven things. 22% okay. are neutrally aligned, not putting energy in, not pulling energy out. And about 18% are typically negative. They're unhappy. Something's going on. And what we know through Gallup, et cetera, is, is that uh, these 
one of these offset one of those. This is like where your power is. Okay. What do y'all yeah. think in terms of how many people? So go ahead, Doug. So we basically subtract 18 from 60 and it's a 42. I got you. So it's kind of like almost like a net promoter score. Yeah, yeah. It's almost exactly like a net promoter score for the organizational health of your organization. Okay. And and now when do you use this survey in, in your journey with the customer? Is this do you augment it? What when do you use it? Well, I, of course, me, you know, I'm using it to roll EOS out because there's no why. It just EOS to, I'm sorry, I hope the probably the, the powers that be, but you know, it looks like it feels to most people like a fucking steamroller. You know, you're doing this to me and not not for me. And so when we do the survey, we can actually say, hey guys, we're doing this for you, not to you. We want to create this one single place where everybody's saying yes. And the cool part about it is once you define it and you start doing it, the negative Nellies self-select out. Okay. And it takes yeah. care of itself and they come over. So it's, that's okay. where the part of the iceberg is. I'm sorry about the F word. It's like a passion about it. Oh, that's okay. I've heard it before. Um, <laughs> just one additional ancillary question is, um, you know, <clears throat> um, the tools that apply to each of these, uh, do you have one for belonging, believe, account? I mean, do you have the tools within EOS? Yeah. Well, yeah. And yeah, and so that's a great question, Doug. It's part of the part of the concierge service. But one of the, the the goal that we go through is we do this little exercise where we put the seven questions across the top, and then we put the tools of your operating system down the side. And we ask the leadership team which one of these tools allows the person to get to and maintain a positive alignment. Right. I you know, you. but a lot of the real lesson is you don't need any more tools. You just need to freaking use them. Right. You know, okay. and so that, that's where it goes. It can pinnacle anything, and it all works. That Thank answers you. a lot of questions you guys got. Good questions. Absolutely. Thank you. We can give you 20 bucks or anything. Yeah, those are good questions. Oh, shit. Okay. Um, We just have maybe like two minutes yeah. left. But, Sergio, do you, do you think you can be concise in your question? <laughs> Good question. I know, Serge. What's up, Serge? Absolutely. Uh, hi, Walt. A long time. Uh, I'll be very concise uh, in spite of my initial uh, initiating fact finder. So first question, um, how does this assessment, if you if you have insight, uh, compare to, uh, for example, the scaling up assessment? I don't know the scaling up assessment. The assessment I know really well is Gallup. So I was trained in Gallup in 2006 as one of their employee engagement coaches. So kind of going back to the granddaddy, yeah, I know that really well. And this is more of a derivative of, of the Q12. So I don't know the scale enough. All right. And the uh, second question is, uh, so you're sending this to the entire population of, of, of the company. How often? Every six months. So, so twice a year. Twice a year. Like right before the, typically right before your annual planning. So you can get a really good pulse on the team health. Right. Organization health. So you kind of know your team health by going up the Ligioni pyramid. But, you know, organizationally, we look at it there and then once in the middle of the year. More than that, you get fatigue. Uh, big believer in not mixing it all up, but keeping it super simple, seven questions and continue to improve those twice a year. 